Welcome back. Now we're going to be talking about one of the most important concepts that's useful for robust control. In particular, we're going to be talking about the loop transfer function. So essentially, I'm going to be talking about the transfer function that includes just the controller and the plant in open loop without any feedback. So I just want to think about this transfer function. And the various, the various properties of this transfer function are extremely important to quantify performance and robustness. So here are some of our goals of feedback. Um, and I like thinking about these in terms of active kind of verbs. So I want to design my system for stability. I want to compensate for model uncertainty. I want to reject disturbances. And I want to attenuate noise in my system. Those are all things I want to do with feedback. And we're going to find that we're able to look at all of those in terms of properties of this simple loop transfer function. So here I'm going to have my output y. Um, this is going to be some epsilon error because we're going to be looking at a reference value where we're subtracting off measurements from that reference value. Um, we're also going to add in a disturbance model d, so plus d. Uh, we're going to add in some noise n. In fact, I think I should probably modify this a little bit. So we're going to have the disturbance before the output. So we're going to have some plus, uh, and maybe my disturbance actually has a transfer function of its own. We're going to call this P D, and D feeds into that transfer function. And then this is Y, the output, and Y measured is with noise. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. I have my system P. I that system P is a clean system, but there's disturbances that get added to the state or to the output. Um, oftentimes, this disturbance transfer function will be a lot like the plant transfer function. They might even be identical. So I have some real output Y that has disturbances. So if this is my pendulum on a cart, maybe there's wind blowing that's, that's disturbing the system. Maybe my measurement has noise on it. So maybe I'm measuring the angle, but my encoder has some noise on it. So I have a noisy measurement. I feed that noisy measurement back and subtract it from my reference. So reference tells me where I want y to be. I subtract the true measured y, and this gives me an error signal. I use that error signal. I pass it through the controller. It tells me what my actuation u should be. That goes through my system, and hopefully the, that passes through the dynamics to make y closer to reference, making epsilon small. We want small error. Okay, And we want, again, be able to handle rejecting disturbances. So even if there's relatively large disturbances, we want to design k so that disturbances don't pass through to epsilon. We want to have good noise attenuation. We don't want noise to get through to epsilon. So we want the controller to act in a way that doesn't amplify measurement noise. Uh, and we also want to have robust, stable, high-performance properties. Um, so we want good performance of p. And we want to have robustness in case our model for P is a little different than reality. Okay? And so what we're going to look at is these special transfer functions based on this loop transfer function. So let me just uh, mark this out. So here is what we're going to be calling our loop transfer function L. So L is for our loop L. Okay, that's our loop transfer function L equals p times k. And I always kind of reverse the order that I draw them. So if it goes k into p, then the transfer function is p times k, because epsilon first passes through k, then passes through p, and that's the output. So this is kind of operator notation. And if we start dealing with systems that have multiple inputs and multiple outputs, then these are going to be matrices, and you're going to need to be careful about what order you order these. And this is the right order. Okay, so the loop transfer function is p times k. And we're going to be looking at how this error depends on properties of this loop transfer function. All right, uh, so there's going to be some math. What we're going to do first of all is I'm going to write down y as a function of d and n and r. Okay, and so what we're going to have is first of all, we're going to have. Um, 
Okay, good. We're going to have y equals my disturbances PD times D plus P times K of epsilon. And what's epsilon? It's just R minus all of this stuff. Okay, so that's times R minus YM, and YM is just Y plus N. So R minus Y minus N. Okay, and just to make a note, this is just epsilon. Okay, so my output Y is just my disturbance plus my loop transfer function times epsilon. And I'm writing it in terms of y because I want to bring all of my y's over to one side and write this as y equals a function of disturbance, reference, and noise. Okay. Okay, so let's do that. Let's bring my y's over. So this is, um, and I'm going to act like these are all matrices. I'm going to act like this is multiple, like a vector of inputs u and a vector of outputs y. And so these are kind of matrix transfer functions. And so this is a matrix. And I'm going to bring it over and I'm going to have. I can put an identity, I can say this is identity times y. So i plus pk y. All I've done is I brought this y term times pk over to the left hand side. This equals pk reference, okay, pk reference. Um, plus p d disturbance minus p k noise. Pretty simple, okay? And then I can solve for y by inverting this. Um, so in general, we hope that this is invertible, and we say y equals, now since this is a matrix, I'm not going to do divided by, I'm going to do a left inverse, identity plus p k inverse times p k times r, plus identity plus pk inverse pd times disturbance minus uh, identity plus pk inverse pk times noise. Okay? And so now what I have is the output of my system y is this big transfer function so a transfer function times reference plus a transfer function times disturbance plus a transfer function times noise. And what I'm going to want is I'm going to want to design k so that all of these transfer functions have desirable properties. And we'll get into what desirable means in a little bit. Um, but the idea is we're going to try to design the controller so that we have good reference tracking so that y equals r. We're going to try to design k so that disturbances are rejected so that this is a small transfer function at least for frequencies where we expect disturbances. And we're going to choose k to make this transfer function really small at frequencies where we think that noise is important. So high frequencies we're going to make this small, probably low frequencies we're going to make this slow. Because remember in our cruise controller our disturbances were these low frequency hills. And we're going to try to make this um, as big as possible for low frequencies because we want to be able to track references of low frequencies, okay? Um, and so what we end up doing is giving these names. So we say that identity plus pk inverse pk, we call this the, okay, we call um, this one i plus pk inverse the sensitivity, so kind of how sensitive is my output to disturbances. We call this one the complementary sensitivity T. And notice that I have the complementary sensitivity T on both noise and reference. Okay? And this is kind of neat. So I have these new transfer functions that tell me how my system reacts to references, disturbances, and noise. And if I want, I can write those in terms of my loop transfer function. So I have S equals I plus L inverse. And I have T, the, so sensitivity S, complementary sensitivity T. T is just I plus L inverse times L, times another L. 
And so you can write out the math, and it's pretty easy to show that if I add s plus t, I have to get the identity matrix. Okay, so if I say s plus t is always equal to the identity matrix for all frequencies everywhere. This has to be true. These are transfer functions. So these are functions kind of in the Laplace variable. But if I add identity plus L times identity plus L inverse, those cancel out. And that's why this is called the sensitivity and complementary sensitivity because they're complements. They always add up to the identity for every frequency, uh, little s, the, the Laplace transform variable. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to rewrite, instead of looking at y in terms of these transfer functions, we're going to look at epsilon in terms of these transfer functions. And then we're going to see what are the properties we want s and t and eventually l to have so that epsilon has good properties in terms of reference disturbance and noise. So that's all coming up. Um, stay tuned. This is one of the most important concepts. We're getting towards robustness. We're going to figure out what it means to have high performance, and robustness in terms of these transfer functions. Okay, thank you.